Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. Hi guys, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. Ben, how are you? I'm fine. I've still got this bloody cold. I don't think the door's shut. I'm going to go sort that. You two talk about He's still got this still bloody got cold. Bloody cold. Are you unwell, Ashton? I well, see you're wearing a sort of comfort hat. I'm on my way, I think. Right. To having it. It's so gradually creeping into my body, I think. You've been off this week. So you've been a bit sick. I had a day off. Ben had a day off last week. Yeah. Was it last week? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Friday. Um, so you're basically due a day off. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited for my day off. It's yeah. going to be really good. What Ben's is just in bed. Yeah. Nice, though, is that we all share microphones. Yeah. yeah, so that when the cultaholic boys come in tomorrow as well, <laughs> yes, mm. tomorrow that they can enjoy it too. Or last week, because well, I know be Jack's fair, got it currently. I, mean, mm. I think it started in in this office. Yeah, because you none mean, of us had it. It started in the cultaholic office. Mm. Now it's traveled its way upstairs. Oh yeah, in to this office, office, the cultaholic office itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah. this podcast I'm, studio I've is attached it the cultaholic to. Cold. Cold. Coldaholic. 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 Yeah. 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 Is yeah. There, is there another? There's probably a pun in there, isn't there? Cultaholics? Mm. No, that's doesn't. Cultaholics. Cultaholics. Yeah, yeah you need to have your say. cultaholics. That's what I was trying to say, but right. I couldn't do it. Cultalemsip. There we go. Don't think we can do any better than that. We that's might need perfect, some antibiotics. No, that's not right at all. <laughs> Okay. Cultibiotics. Cultibiotics. Okay. That's a good one. Yeah, that's uh-huh. good. The other way around. Good. The inversion. Yeah. Sure. If at yeah. first you don't succeed, try it. and try and, and try, try and try and try and try off the and try and try and try. How are you enjoying oh, the gosh. video version of this podcast? Yeah. It's, there's a lot really just really just crap Ben's everywhere. <laughs> Ben's been up and down in his seat already. We're moving things off the desk. Yeah. It's a good start. Yeah. It's really good. Anyway, this is our video game podcast where we yes. talk about video game stuff. Each and every week we are sponsored by a very real video game adjacent sponsor. Ashton has the ad read for this week in front of her right now in her hands in the paper. Do you hear it? That's it. That's an ad read right there. So um, we've talked a little bit about what's going on in the office at the moment. Um, and you know what it's like having a cold. You know, you feel like every, every 25 seconds, you're either blowing your nose or you're coughing, <laughs> coughing. or you're, you know, aching. you're aching. You feel real rubbish. But there is, ex- exactly, we've had that every minute for the last week. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is something that you, the viewer, and Hi. you, the people in this office, we. can do to solve it. Yeah. It's coming out very, very soon, uh, given the current situation. It's going to be really good. Coming out on Xbox Game Pass, it's Lemsipgate. Lemsip. Like <sighs> Lemnisgate. Yeah. I bet you panicked when I said Lemsip, Lemsip didn't I did. you, a minute ago. I was like... Why do you ruin everything fun? Right, he's gonna, he is fun. Cu- he's going to ruin something he's fun. Ruin something what do you mean fun? fun? This is a real sponsor. Sorry, yeah, Lemsipgate. Yeah, Lemsipgate. Not a pun. It's, it's not. It's not called to Lemsip. It's Lemsipgate. Yeah. What is Lemsipgate? It's a new thing you can take every twenty five <laughs> seconds. That you you just... take it every twenty five <laughs> seconds. Uh huh. It's a yeah. new thing. The one, new, you don't need to know like anything else. It's like a medicine, else. isn't it? It's a drink, isn't it? Lemsip's a drink, isn't it? You know what Lemsip is. <laughs> sure. It comes you as just, a drink. I don't have lemon take, at home. I have Tesco drink. cold and flu sachets. Oh, okay. Sachets. Well, yeah. well, we're not sponsored by le- uh, Tesco. Tesco. Sorry, sorry. Cold and flu sachet gate. It's Lemsip gate, actually. So. Lemsip gate sounds like some sort of scandal, scandal involving Lemsip. All of the cold and flu medicine made people ill yeah. for a short time. Until it's it time was to regulate big cold and flu medicine. Yeah. Mm. To be I'm calling it Lemsip gate. Um, MB came up with that last night. I was oh, really? really struggling to think uh, to find one on, you know, looking out for a sponsor. Mm. Couldn't find one. And MB mm. was like, wow, what about this one? This about company Lemsip? that I can put you in touch with. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But it's not real. Oh, for <sighs> God's sake. MB, why did you MB, lie to yeah, us? Why are you always us? lying? Why are you always going to ruin everything true? Yes. No, of course, we're sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump, where as you are listening to this new episode, our brand new Patreon tiers are available oh. for everyone. little pregnant pause for you there. And also, I didn't feel very well for a second. Use protection if you don't um, want pregnant pauses. <laughs> So go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump for as little as one dollar. You can submit questions to this podcast, but we've got tons of other new rewards available. If you're an existing subscriber, it'll only serve to add value to your uh, 
your tier, your chosen tier, because you get everything at that tier and everything below it as well. So, for example, if you supported us at the ten dollar tier, uh, in the hopes of getting access, in, say in the hopes you the would, hopes. It's uh, not a, it's not to a get loot access crate. to our fortnightly <laughs> Triple Jump After Dark podcast, which will be releasing next week for the ten dollar patrons, uh, you would also get. Early access to worst games ever. Early access to weirdest games ever. Wow. Uh, a special room in our Discord server. Uh, asking monthly questions for this night. podcast. Monthly game nights. There's so much. So much. There's like so much stuff. So um, do consider going Let's over there. crazy over And there. checking it out. But before we get to our first question, we will hear from someone, haven't we? Yeah. They're called triplejump.gg. Wow. Hello everyone! As well as our extremely real and totally not fictitious in any way sponsor, we're officially partnered with PlayStation, Xbox and Nintendo to sell their codes through our own website, triplejump.gg. Here you can get everything from topping up your digital wallets to PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live Gold, Xbox Game Pass and Nintendo Switch Online subscriptions, as well as Minecraft mine coins. <laughs> mine coins? They'll be your coins any minute. <laughs> nice one, Peter. Yeah, thanks very much. It's 100% legitimate, directly supports us and provides you with the delightful digital currencies you're going to buy anyway. Visit triplejump.gg to browse our full stock. Triplejump.gg. This is a real sponsor. Wonderful. Thank you very much, triplejump.g. We've got a question here from Jumper Kimmons, mm. who says, First of all, how dare all of you... <gasps> what? Now I'm going to correct Jumper and say, how dare you, Peter? Because um, I think that's more accurate. My mother's name is Joaquina, and she goes by Kina. Sorry, what? Joaquina. Joaquina. Oh, I thought you said Joaquina. What's Joaquina? Joaquina. Joaquina. Hua. Yeah. Because it's a J. Yeah, I know that. Kina. I didn't hear the K bit. Oh. I thought you just went Hua. Well, it's not a K, are it's a sure Q. Not, are you Joaquina. Sure it's not Hua Hua no, because it says in brackets yeah. pronounced Kina. Like Joaquin Phoenix. Right. Yeah. My mother's name, <laughs> as if we've not butchered it enough, Jumper. Sorry, Jumper. <laughs> Can you just... Is Joaquina. And she goes by Kina, in parentheses, pronounced Kina. Mm. A perfectly normal name. I think so. I've never heard anyone who'd gone by Kina. No, me neither. So Let's have a go jumper. at Nina's again. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Flippery Nina. Nina's. Uh, Slippery Nina's. <laughs> anyways, continues Jumper, when it comes to a game or character you are fond of, would you rather have less than stellar sequels just so your franchise can continue, or would you rather your favorite game remain a solemn obelisk alone in gaming history? Mm. I have fond memories of Blasto on the PS1, and whilst I'd love a sequel or a remaster, I'm happy there wasn't a sequel to ruin its legacy. Blasto is a... Ashton just elbowed me, Peter. Oh, what? It's Guys, sorry. can you chill out over there, please? Um, Blasto is a, a third-person platformer where you play as... A real cool dude called Blasto. You're a third person platform. Whoa, hang on now. I think you're a cool dude. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Why Me can't too. he be both? My mum thinks I'm a cool dude as What's well. What's your mum's name? Uh, Joaquina. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there are pros and cons, and it depends entirely on how bad the bad sequel is that mm. we're talking mm -hmm. about and how beloved the, the original is. Yeah. I think it's like, very much case by case. I mean, for example, everyone knows one of my favorite games or series of all time is the Spyro trilogy, mm. which everyone also knows. There were no other games. There, after yeah, it's no just games, a trilogy. Just a three. Um, so yeah, that had some bad sequels, but for one thing, it helped that they were like a spin-off or a re like a reboot. So I don't have to even consider them necessarily as part of the original trilogy. Uh, but also. I, I would probably just just continue to enjoy the three that I like and mm. just have my as my you have head cannon as they say yeah and just say all oh, that the others aren't aren't real. well I don't I, I, like I say I don't have to do that with Spyro but you know in another case if a rubbish Spyro four official Spyro four came out in mm. whatever year I would go well that's just not real I d I, d I can't it see it exist I don't I don't yeah. want to look at it you'll what be in a nursing about? home at some point and and your children will be coming to visit you. And you'll be saying, oh, I love the Spyro games. Mm. All three of them. Yeah. And they'll say, no, granddad. granddad. They, were, they made seven. No, They're they like, no, 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 no. There were only three. three. There were only three, three Spyro games. I honestly, when I'm an old man and potentially just in a home, 
I just want them to sort me out with an emulated PS1. <laughs> an old CRT. An old CRT. Well, yeah, whether it's CRT or not, I don't mind. And then just the first three Spyro games and mm. maybe a bit of Crash. Or Honestly, something. you would be set for life. I would you? be because yeah. potentially by the time I've played or through. I death, I guess. Is more That's or, well, set, set till death, death, I guess. <laughs> I would be, once I've played through the first, you know, the only three, sorry, <laughs> uh, I'd probably be able to just go back to the start and enjoy them again. Mm. So, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think. I can see the pros and cons of both of these, really. It's nice to have more of a thing that you like, but depending on how bad we're talking in terms of sequels, then... Because uh, the wording that is used in the question is less than stellar. Um, yeah. And if I love a series Don't enough, get me started on people called Stella as no, well. No, I mean, ridiculous. Yeah, what a, a normal name. <laughs> uh, if it's Especially with an R. Yes. Stella. Uh, I, could, I could take... A quote less than stellar sequel for a series that I really liked. Quote. But if it was, <laughs> but if it was outright bad, then that would not be. No, would not be good because bad no, is not, not good. good. Well, there's some weird energy in the studio today. Yeah, uh, it's me. Sorry, it's mostly you. <laughs> uh, I saw that Lemsip or that Tesco cold and flu Lemsip drink. Gate. Lemsip Gate. Lemsip Gate. Scandal. Um, I think I'm gonna have a hot take here. Currently. Every game does not need a sequel. Mm. I feel like every game's getting a sequel. Mm -hmm. Every game doesn't really need a sequel. No, no, no maybe not. So. Mm -hmm. Unless it um, does. In which case, that's in which fine. Which case, you know, it's, it's had one. Yeah. And yeah. we've just got to make um, peace with it. But if it's, I mean, I'm happy either way. If the game has like wrapped itself up neatly in a little bow at the end of the, of the game, and I've really enjoyed it, I don't necessarily need, see the need for another sequel because it probably doesn't need it because mm. we've already finished the story because normally when we've when we finish the story in this one over here we we're going to get a new story in this one over here and it might not be as good see simply not as good looks rubbish mm -hmm. um so i think that there's always a risk with bringing out a sequel especially when a game is very beloved by lots of people but like you're saying it's always pros and cons cuz it could be a really good sequel and then you've got another really good game featuring your favorite characters but it also could be, like you say, a less than stellar sequel. So do we just not bother with it and leave it as it is in a nice little wrapped up bundle of happiness? Or do we try not to, we try and get more money out of me and... Out of me. Out of me. Out of you. <laughs> and of me Coming soon, me. Ashton 2. <laughs> yeah. And um, I meant like they want me to give them money. I not see. like rinse me. For like for, a like a, a cash cow. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but yeah, there is always pros and cons. But I think for most of the games that are coming out recently, the sequels haven't been bad. They've not, probably not been as good, which I think is something that we're all aware of. The second game is never going to be as good and capture that same feeling as you get playing the first one. Mm -hmm. um, but most of them are all right. All right. They're all right. Yeah. So I don't know if I answered the question or if I just did this a lot, but I felt like I answered the question. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> She's causing oh, she's causing it. violence again, it. Ben. Or should I say, Ken? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's very selfishly. It entirely depends on the game mm -hmm. as to whether or not I think it needs a sequel. Yeah. Uh, Kina, for example, is a game that I would be perfectly happy with being a standalone title. Mm -hmm. Don't need a Kina too. I would like it if Ember Labs went away and made an entirely new game. Perhaps <laughs> went away and just, then just, <laughs> just buggered off. That's it. Uh, and made an entirely new game based on you know everything they learned from Kina. Mm. Mm -hmm. And perhaps it could have a lot of similarities in terms of you know it's a, an action platformer or whatever. But I don't think we need a Kina too, mm -hmm. for example. Mm. Um, and or then Kina. Kina. Yes. Christ. See, Jump has got me all mixed up now because mm. there are people called Kena. Yes, Kena. Um, however, I could play Spider-Man and Arkham games until the heat death of the universe quite happily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they just kept pumping them out forever, I don't know that I would ever get bored of them. And having said that, actually, I probably would get bored of them after a while. Yeah. Uh, but, Too much of a good thing, you know? Well, yeah, exactly. You can't play the best game ever forever. No. Unless it's Spyro, of yeah. course. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, d I genuinely think it really varies. I was a big fan of Assassin's Creed in its early days, mm. especially 2 and Brotherhood and Revelations, I yeah. want to say. Was that was that part of the two the two spin offs? Brotherhood and Revelations? I think Assassin's so. Creed yeah. 2 Revelations. Right anyway, I loved those games. I thought they were fantastic. And while not everyone 
is on board with where Assassin's Creed is now. The fact that they are taking sort of at least a year, two years between games, I think has served to benefit the series yeah. rather than them being annualized because they sort of got a bit lost in the woods for a while um, and their quality dipped and they still sold a lot, which is why they kept coming. But there is something to be said for not just pumping out sequel after sequel after sequel. And I don't think Assassin's Creed, for example, should just stop as a series and there should only be one. Mm. But perhaps games that do get, you know, a game every year like Call of Duty could maybe take a note and just step just back and try to take the time to innovate and do well, something. Well, I was just about ambitious. to say, like in the case of Call of Duty, that I don't think anyone would say that, well, maybe maybe one or two of the Call of Duty games of the past five or ten years have been maybe less than good. Mm. Um, but, you know, even if they're pumping out good-ish games uh, super regularly, sometimes I think even that is just too much for me. Like, yeah. mm. I stopped playing Call of Duty after, like, Modern Warfare 2 or something like that, uh, or World at War. And just because I kind of thought, I've just kind of had enough of this. And, like, there's nothing wrong with these newer ones that are coming out necessarily. Um, but just sometimes it can be nice to have a break. So sometimes it's purely about frequency and not even about quality, I yeah. would say. No, I agree. I, I don't think Call of Duty... Call of Duty very rarely puts out a game that's bad. Mm. Uh, yeah. I think maybe Ghosts and yeah. Advanced Warfare didn't quite hit the mark, perhaps for you know a lot of people. But... Yeah, I think it's. I genuinely just think it it varies. Really, there are some games that I would just play sequel after sequel of mm -hmm. quite happily, regardless of how often they made them, and then some games that I think just stand up on their own. Yeah. Yes, I would love a Bloodborne too, but if they never make one, Bloodborne will be untarnished forever. Mm. Yeah. As just this this pillar that's, of an, that's of an excellent game. Yeah. Uh, as sad as I would be, not to see more, <laughs> mm. but there we are. Should we move on? Let's. I think we should do a segment we've never done before. Really? What's it called? I think called? we should get crazy mm. and do something out of the box. What? Out of left field. Whoa. We should talk about what we play in. Oh. Huh? It's what we play in time. Time to talk about what we play in. Play in. Thank you. Uh, Peter. What have you been playing, bud? We've been playing. I've been, been playing, playing that there, that there, Kena. We've been playing, mm -hmm. Bridge of Spirits. Mm -hmm. um, Kena. Kena, yeah, that's it. Uh, I haven't quite finished it yet, but I am on the final zone. Um, and I think I left it having got all three relics. So I imagine that means that I've, I've pretty much just got one boss fight left. I'm at the exact same and point as you. Oh, I, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I played a fair bit of it the tail end of last week and early this week. And then the past couple of days, I've not because I've just not felt up to it. I've not wanted to stay up playing games, so I've just been going to bed, trying to feel better. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, really just carrying carrying on with that and enjoying it as I go through it. And it's nice to have, um, well, I don't want to be too spoilery, but like there's, there's some change in uh, biome in the latter area. Mm -hmm. It ultimately all turns back into pristine jungle again, but it's nice to, it like mixes it up a little bit here and there. Um, which I think probably was due as the game goes on. You know, it can't, as pretty as the jungles are, yeah. once you've seen jungle for a couple of hours, you've kind of seen it all. But um, <laughs> it's, it is ultimately nice that it turns back to that because you know that's mm. how it's meant to be. But um, it's nice just to, to have a mix up. Um, kind of like what we were talking about last week with um, uh, Spider Man being set in New York, yeah. mm. game after game. Mm -hmm. You know, when you enter a new area of Kena and you're like, oh, what's this going to be? Oh, well, yeah, it's it's more jungle. It's green. I suppose, I suppose it would be. Um, but uh, just, yeah, I'm just really enjoying that game. And I can't say enough about the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's not that often that a game will come out and I will, that will be like the thing I enjoy the most out of everything in the game. It happens from time to time. But this is one of those cases where I just think it's so nice just to listen to. Yeah, above everything else. Um, still kind of in agreement with the issues that we had earlier on. I still think the the uh, the slug controls like ass. <laughs> um, and I don't, I still haven't parried since like the tutorial. No. I've not even tried. I'm not going to. Um, so yeah, uh, same, same thoughts really. It's not really 
changed. Still just enjoying it. So, and that's all I've been playing because I've been sick. Ah, Ashton. <laughs> Well, I've been playing Kana as well. I'm at the same point as you are. I've got all three relics going into, like, I assume the last yeah. battle. Um, I'm going around trying to collect, like, as many of the rots and the hats and stuff as I can. Mm -hmm. But I'm really struggling to find the ones I haven't found. Like, I'm just running around on the arrows going, like, there's two rots here somewhere, yeah. but where are they? You know, just that little heartbeat in your controller when you're near a rot. Have you noticed that? It's no. not enough. It's too subtle. If you're, yeah, well, it's I haven't even subtle, noticed. But, yeah, it. if you're walking around and you're near where in a rot is. Four, well. Yeah. It, no. Oh, uh, maybe not. No, no I didn't no. think so. I was a bit confused. Uh, I thought it could do, because obviously that has vibration, but does it not? No, I it's probably it's too right. subtle. It'd probably be some, like, controller haptic feedback yeah. thing. Oh, I figured it would just do the actual vibration. Yeah. They no. probably could it if might they do. wanted to. To be fair, it might do. I might just not notice noticed it. How yeah. else could we get them to upgrade to the PS5? Mm. Yeah. You, you want to get that You want to get that heartbeat. Heartbeat, little heartbeat, heartbeat and the closer you are, I think it, it gets more intense the closer you are oh. to where the rot is. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, so I'm still looking for all of the rots and stuff. But I have been playing a couple of other things this week as well. Mm -hmm. So I was home over the weekend. I went to see a show. So I went home right to Leicester. Um, so me and Ben, my Ben, mm -hmm. played some Overcooked All You Can Eat, oh, which was cool. a PS Plus game. Did you fall September. out with each other? We didn't. No, oh, we just, impressive. We've just kept being like, we're stuck on one side of the room and the, the oven's on the other side. Everything's on fire. It was quite a lot that happened. Sounds yeah. like you um, just in the kitchen. Just me in the yeah. kitchen, yeah. Um, but yeah, we enjoyed that. It's, I kind of thought All You Can Eat would be like a new set of levels, but it's one and two. And Why do we do that, though? It's that Okay, so for people who are listening on the audio, we've got a TV behind us yeah. with our logo on it and a very nice background. It's The video is three hours long, yet the last two podcasts we've done, it's sort of restarted itself. I, I think it maybe resumes from where it was left. So that yeah. maybe started at like two hours 40 or something. Yeah, it does. It resumes oh, from does where it? We need to remember to... stupid thing. I have to remember to restart what, like it from VHS the beginning. Tape. Next time. Yeah, yeah, rewind what, it. What year are we living in? <laughs> Sorry, Ashton. That's okay. Yeah, I thought it'd be like new levels, but it's one and two and then a couple of like co-op slash versus modes, okay. mm -hmm. um, which, which was fun. I also have been playing with MB. Um, some Lemnis Gate, a couple of rounds of Lemnis Gate. Um, we talked a bit about that on the Quipscope. Mm. Some Lemnis Gate, yeah. Um, talked a bit about it on the Quipscope with some uh, issues getting into games, but it is quite fun. So if you are looking for something you can kind of kill each other with, that's a good shout. Mm. I've also been playing some Orcs Must Die 3. Have you? I have. Oh yeah, my God. We, we were playing it co op. Oh, I hope um, you don't hate it because no, I've I really don't hate picked it, it up. I really enjoyed it. And um, we. I'm not very good at it. Mm. We had a couple of levels where we were getting like five skulls and then it very quickly went down to getting like one or two skulls, okay. like barely scraping past the levels. Um, but yeah, I was really enjoying it. I, I was a bit more like combat based than I thought from what you'd said. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. It is probably the hardest of the three, I think. So mm. it doesn't surprise me that maybe you're not getting as many skulls. As yeah. you go. But I've not played the co-op and I'd like to at some point. So. Yeah, it's quite good to be fair. Because mm. um, we do, we just finished like, there was like a flashback to... Um, yeah, to when the orcs the were siege. alive. When the orcs were alive. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. To the siege. We've just finished, we finished that um, before we finished playing. That's quite the jump. Um, yeah, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Um, and I'm excited to play some more um, from... A grand distance because we were playing it sort of next to each other. Mm. So hopefully we can play a bit more this weekend. Nice. Mm. So yeah, that's what I've been playing. Ben, what have you been playing? I'll tell you what we've been playing. Mm. Uh, I've been playing Heina. Uh, well, I Heina. finished Heina and I have the platinum trophy in Heina now. Congrats. Thank you. Um, as I was saying to Ashton earlier this week, there was an exploit available. Oh, yeah. In order to get the to finish it on master difficulty, which unlocks after you finish the game. Yeah. Uh, without actually playing through it at all. Right. And I did that because I am a professional trophy hunter and I saw that there was news articles like, oh, there's an exploit, by the way. And I saw that and thought, right. It's not as simple as play all the way yeah. through and then change it to master at the very, very end and then complete the game. Or is that it? Might be. Yeah. Is that be. it? What you do, well, it's been patched now. So I was very aware that I was on a time limit because I knew that they would patch it because I've been in this situation. That's before a rookie error. Games. Why did that? Why did they not think of that? Don't know. Mm. Um, but it's slightly more. It's there's a little more to it. It sounds like a weird 
bug more than anything else. It's not a case of playing through it and then just changing the difficulty at the end. Right. What you do is when you get to the final area and you have to interact with something to end the game, essentially, mm. um, you, you create a manual save there. Then you interact with the thing, finish the game, get the trophy for finishing the game on whichever difficulty you did. Go back to the main menu. You get the thing. It says, hey, you unlocked absolutely no fun difficulty. Yeah. You're like, sweet. Mm -hmm. You start a new game on absolutely no fun difficulty, play through the opening section until you get your first rot. Then you load your previous save and it takes you to the very end of the game, still on master difficulty, with right. your right. very low health pool, with your only one rod, <laughs> and you just interact with this item, and it somehow works. Oh wow, that's like weird you that it just takes you with your health bar and one rod. Yeah, yeah that's, so it doesn't that even glitch. doesn't mm -hmm. even load your previous progress. It just moves you to that point in okay. the game. So something went wrong on their end, and I knew that this was going to be patched. Mm. And there's yeah. no way in he like I really enjoyed this game. And I'm happy to get all the collectibles, and I did that. But there's absolutely no way in hell that I'm punishing myself and ruining this game for me by struggling through it. Harder than it ought to be, I would say. That it, game. There are it's some brutal. absurd difficulty spikes. One of the bosses in particular, I actually had to do a few times because I couldn't work out what the game even wanted me to do mm. to fight what, it. Like one of the last Relic bosses? Or? Yes, I think the, uh, the one, if I just said the one in a tower, would that make sense to you at all? Um, in a tower. There was fire involved. Does that help at all? Uh, I don't know. It all sort of looks the same. Yeah. Okay. Not in a bad way. Well, there was. Does. There was. I did reach a point where I just thought, like, I don't, like, I really don't know what this game wants me to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I enjoyed it for the most part, but it definitely has issues that would be ironed out either in a sequel or in a future game that this developer decides to do. But for their first effort. Really, really impressed mm. by this game. Can I just complain about one specific thing that really foxed can. me for ages? And I had to look up a guide. And then when I realized what the solution was, I was like, oh, for God's sake, of course it is. Uh, when you are going to the, uh, the, the, there's like the tree shrine, the snow oh, and shrine, and there's the something. Forest. Yeah. And there's it's a like bit. A fishing shrine and stuff. Yeah. The fishing shrine is exactly what I had issues with. The, the, the candles. You have to shoot five crystals. Mm. And I was doing it and it would spawn like two of the little owl bat things and then I would kill them and then it would just do nothing. And I'd be like, what? And then, then I would like shoot them again and that would just happen over and over. And I was like, what's going wrong here? And you have to shoot them in the right order, mm. as it turns out. Yeah. And then yeah. I was like, okay, I have to shoot them in the right order. And I was shooting them in just random orders trying to work it out. And I was like, there are a lot of permutations and combinations here. I'm going to be here a long time. Mm. Then it turns out there are candles yeah. on the shrine that tell you exactly which order right. you should. I had to look it up. And then only after I realized, I was like, oh, the candles tell you the numbers. Yeah. Um, I just happened to figure that out because I, I finished playing it. Like I was halfway through doing that, so I can't figure it out. So I stopped playing. The next day I went back to do it. And I was like, how do I know the order of this? And I went, oh, there's some candles on there. That can't be it, can it? It's because Tried it and I was like, oh, brilliant. I spent like a long time trying to figure it the out. The issue is, like from a design perspective is that those candles are all over the world mm. everywhere. And so when you just see some on that shrine, it doesn't mean anything to mm. you. They should have made them like big gold candles or something, you know? Yeah, um, they pull that trick again a couple of times, but it's far more obvious. Yeah, yeah. The, like the, the visual clue. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that, really that one, the one you're too. talking yeah. about, the the one that's on side, sort of a small island and it's yeah. called water. Yeah, that one, I genuinely didn't even know it was candles. The first time <laughs> I played it through... I just got it right, got it right. randomly. Yeah. I was like, but I didn't make the connection that when you get it wrong, the it releases bed. some yeah nasty things to come and fight you. I genuinely didn't even make that connection. Yeah, I just thought that was what was meant to happen, and then nothing and then you happened. I thought I was you like... defeat them, and then it's going to open the the flower thing, like it always yeah. does when you mm. defeat enemies, and it didn't. So yeah, a few it's things really, to iron out really design dark. wise going forward, but. Yeah, most very impressed with that game. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely up there for me this year in terms of the yeah. the games that I've enjoyed the most. Um, I also played The Forest for the first time. I bought oh, The yeah. Forest oh, right. flipping ages ago because it is always on sale mm -hmm. and therefore it's always in the charts. And yet I don't know anyone who actually plays it. So me and my friends, my my Warzone crew, we actually you hungry there, Ash. I have a rumbly tummy. It's fine. A rumbly tumbly. Uh, we all bought the forest and i was finally able to give it a go it's basically really 
janky Minecraft. Yeah, I've seen videos of it on with cannibals. It, it's like I'm really impressed with it, and I think it's it's got it does a lot right, but it's so it's janky is the only word I can really think to describe <laughs> it. It's not broken, but there's so much that is weird and a bit off about you it. You like physically cut trees down, don't you? And yeah. like logs just come down and mm -hmm. they're kind of just in where it lands, there's like four logs that Well there's that really up. popular clip from when Hat Films and Sips are playing it where Sips has gone to like the toilet or something. Ross cuts down a tree and the tree lands on the base and just explodes the house <laughs> and Sips is sat in it. So he comes back and he watches it. From his perspective it just everything just disintegrates around oh, him. Oh God. So <laughs> It's yeah, it's it is fun. I had I had a lot of fun just messing around in it, you know, building zip lines and stuff mm. between the trees and the the cannibals. Like the AI on the cannibals is really good. Yeah, I think, and that they will they will the voice acting is really spooky on them, and then the, in that they will laugh like quite maniacally and weirdly, and you'll just hear them running around. And when you when you run up to them to try and attack, they'll like sidestep and like sprint away from you. And then when you turn around, they'll come running back up to you and try and hit you and mm. stuff. It's 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 good. I don't know if I'll play much more of it, but I, you know it's worth messing around in if you're looking for something to play with your friends. Uh, and finally, I am about halfway through Gravity Rush Two. Oh, okay. oh yeah, I saw you pick that up. I'm really enjoying Gravity Rush Two. Um, I I love the first one, even though the the camera is just does not know what to do half the time. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like there should be some free uh, floating mechanics to move around because essentially what you do is you point the camera in a direction, press a button, that's where gravity yeah. is. Yeah. So while you are technically flying, what that means is that when you press the button to stop gravity going that way, you're just sort of there in midair, just floating. And I would love to be able to you know, if you had the power of flight in a game, for example, just be able to move around a bit mm. without having to just choose a direction and go, that's where gravity is. Yeah. Uh, I am liking it. It's, I've only is got it like- as good as the first one? I don't, I don't think so. No, okay. I don't think so. But I am enjoying it. And I've only got a few days left of my PS uh, Now subscription. Uh. So I've got to try and just charge through it before uh -huh. I lose access to it. But uh, yeah, great game. Great game. Perfect for, you know, what it was really just sort of a, a lower budget puzzler thing mm. game yeah it's not really a puzzler it's just sort of more of a Yeet bad action game. well yeah <laughs> the combat is not great uh but i like it there's there's something special about gravity rush it's really fun uh but there we are that's what i've been playing mm. well it's time for question two i think oh okay this comes from transnosaurus hex they say hey abp if you could live in any video game world which world which would you pick and why? And what, would, <laughs> <laughs> what would you well, be? Well, Transmissor Hex talks in such a normal cadence. Yeah. <laughs> what would you be? A mighty warrior? A mighty warrior? A smart maid? A smart maid. An NPC who mindlessly goes home from home to work and back again? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> what would you pick and why? <laughs> uh, someone told me that, um, or I saw someone tweet say, we should have asked her to read an article out as part of her um, application process. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no. How easily can you read a Kotaku yeah. article? <laughs> how easily can you read, I think, would and be why? a good one. And why? And why? Um, would have torn up the application immediately. <laughs> what have? No. How do you say this name? Luke Polnkit? <laughs> no, you're, sorry. <laughs> you're this out. job's not for you. Um, thank you, Transnosaurus Hex, for the question. I, to give you a very contemporary answer... Why not live in the world of Cana Bridge of Spirits? Because the spookies. Uh, well, the spookies in most games. And, and everyone's they're, they're dead. Only, they're only spookies. They're only there because it's of a beautiful the game. world. But I'm going to fight back on this one yeah. against both of you because it's a it's a world that's lost to time. You'd be all on your own. Are you talking about in its heyday? Well, I'm you just you know when like, the people uh, were there. Whenever. I just think it's nice. But you'll be you'll be so I sad just mean and alone. Physically, as as a place, okay. we don't have to talk about whether we're alone or not. Or okay. not. Like a lot of get I've, nice game worlds are a bit desolate. I said if I was going to live there, I would be a little rot with a little dinosaur hat on. <laughs> there you go. That so would there's be what I lots would be. of rots around, and I could make friends with all the other rots, and they'd all be like, "Wow, I should have a nice dinosaur hat you have on." And I'd be like, "Thank you." I've got the dinosaur hat now, and I I love it. It's cool, isn't it's it? You great. too. I think you two being real silly buddies. Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, another world that is, as you explore it, pretty desolate is the world of uh, the first Spyro game, I think is like really pretty mm. and nice and uh, kind of relaxing in the kind of Kena sort of way. Um, and yeah, if you want to get 
specific about this and yeah. say, well, where is everyone? Then, yeah, it would be a bit lonely. But, like, I mean, we've even been asked, what would you be? A mighty warrior, a smart mage, an mm -hmm, NPC? Mm -hmm. I would be a person who has friends there. <laughs> oh! That's cheating. You I'd can't really do that. I'd be a boy. Yeah. I'd be the biggest village I'd boy. I'd be the biggest village boy. Yeah. I mean, I do have a, a one more answer, which solves the population issue. Uh, but it is very much a slightly more dangerous and spooky world, but I still think it's just very nice. Okay. Provided I could hear the music <laughs> while I'm walking God, around. There's, so, there's so many so caveats. Many caveats. <laughs> no, it, I don't have to hear the music, but it would make it even nicer. Uh, Cyrodiil of Oblivion. Oh, you would go mental if you heard the same 12 tracks for 24 hours <laughs> For the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> and it would be fewer because I wouldn't Please. want to get into combat situations. I'd just be in the market at all times. Have you heard of the high elves? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, speaking to people would be a bit weird, um, but never mind. Oh! Uh, oh! Yeah. But Cyrodiil is a very nice place. And if <laughs> again, if you can choose who you can be, I would be maybe just a completely OP warrior, so I don't have to worry about dying to mud crabs. But still, for some reason, living in the cheapest shack on the Imperial waterfront. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's you don't need any more space than that. When I'm humble. in town, that's where I live. You but... can store twelve thousand items in each yeah, shelf in of your drawer. Why, yeah. why do you? Why do you even bother? You know, with a big house. If I need somewhere to stay, that's where I will live. But uh, I will otherwise go go wandering and killing animals and stuff. Someone yeah. stolen Ashton sweet roll. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm really sorry. I was fine. I thought I'm not even hungry. And then while you were talking, it just started going. Can I make br a breakfast recommendation for you? Yeah. Mud crab chitin, yes. cod liver oil. Tablet. Oh, yeah. yeah. And a, a multivitamin. Yeah. Delicious pill breakfast. A Ben right. Potter pill breakfast. Cyrodiil's a really good shout, though. It's pretty. It's a pretty place. Pretty I place. do technically have a pill breakfast, but mine is not. Mine's Buscapan. <laughs> <laughs> Which is supposed to make your Buscapan tummy better. And tummy and feel better. Um, Ashton, please. My other one that isn't Kana's world is Final Fantasy VII's Midgar. I'd like oh, to be about, whereabouts. <laughs> I'd like to be a really cool person with spades for hands with, with, that hangs out in the seventh heaven bar drinking and eating eggs and chips. <laughs> That's why you're what, the one that the giant plate falls on and crushes. Well, pre pre that. pre plate, before you know, I'd have like happened. six months of bliss before I was I'd crushed have a to nice death. Nice time before that, and then after that happens, I just go to like the wool the wool market. Really. Yeah, just hang out there. Honey Wall Bee market Inn. seems yeah, I'm that seems like a really spend dodgy a lot place. Of time in the I'd just Bee move Inn. into just the uh, the golden um, compass sort of <laughs> <laughs> gate bridge. The golden saucer. <laughs> oh, I laughed at my shoulder made a funny. Oh no! Oh Christ! It's all going, <laughs> Peter. You're going to be the only one <laughs> no, fit to run the chat side of the table. It's dangerous over there. But I'm just saying, I think it would be nice to just hang okay. out in the bar, and everyone's so stylish, and I could just go and. You could buy new clothes. I can't wait to hear Ben's answer for me and you to <laughs> rip the crap out of it because I know. Jesus. All right. This no guy said, really doesn't no want to live anywhere you else. Have to but live there during when the game's happening. It could be like after when the, you know, after Final Fantasy Seven when the world's good again. Hmm. <laughs> I wanna live in Anor Londis. I'd like to live. Londis. Yeah, the, the corner <laughs> shop. Yeah, and or Londis. Go There's a Photoshop some, waiting to happen. Yeah. Some cheap, uh, what were those uh, fluffy, what were those cakes called? <laughs> what? Uh, that we gave, that Ross had, a Snowy Joey. Snowy Joey. Go and have some Snowy Joeys from the Anor ah, Londis. from the Anor Londis, yeah. No, I have gone with ones that I actually genuinely would like to live in when I was- Well, so did we! <laughs> no, because you die. You die. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'd no. like to. I'd like to live in Celadon City, in off of the Pokemon games. Okay. Okay. A lot of people there. What if one of them stabs you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Idiot. Jeez. But you'd uh, be able to walk was... two minutes about some child trying to fight you. Or a rat. A lot of rats dog. there. Pigeons. Actually, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot Loads of grimer of there, but you know, whatever. You guys would know. I just mean in the world generally, mm. actually. Actually, but. Celadon City. I always thought was one of the most exciting places to finally arrive at when I was a child playing uh, Pokemon Blue because there was that big old shopping center where you could buy pretty much anything you wanted, including evolutionary stones, which were really exciting. You know, the water stone and the thunder stone, the fire stone, the leaf stone, oh, water now stone. Now I'm interested. Exactly. I like to collect It stones. was like, I know Saffron City, I think, is the is the biggest city technically because it, you know, it's just a load of side, uh, side scrapers. God, kill me. Skyscrapers. 
Um, and you can't really go in any of them. There's very few buildings you can actually go in in that place. But Celadon was really exciting. It had a gym. There was an underground Team Rocket operation underneath the gambling corner. Um, and you could gamble in a Pokemon game. Whoa, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but that was always just a very exciting uh, place to arrive in when I was playing Pokemon. And I thought it was very cool. And I would love to just live there. What would you was, be? I don't know. Right, grime. Well, that's the second part of the question. <laughs> what would you be? You not answer and that. why? And why? Uh, I would be, I don't know, Pokemon trainer then, I suppose. Or I'd work for Game Freak, the developers of the Pokemon games, who are canon based in a building in Celadon City. There's a man you can talk to, and he said, I'm the designer. I designed you. And it's really, it's like meeting oh God. God. It's really weird. Oh, I don't think I'd like that. It's really maybe fourth wall breaking. Guy. So maybe I'd go work for Game Freak in Celadon City. My other one is I would just be an NPC going about their business, having survived some brutal war, apparently, that's happened at some point, in Pelican Town from Stardew Valley. Okay. What a lovely place to live. Music again. Listen to that on a loop until I go into Go pick up seashells from the seashore. Uh, go, you know, annoy. You have to break your back every day. Get up at, with the crow of the cock, as it were. The crack of crows. Yeah, milk Not necessarily. No, I'm not saying I would be a farmer. Okay. Just an NPC. I'd just be wandering. You know how some of them just... have jobs. No, they don't. Most of them have jobs. Some of them just have houses and they just wander around. Maybe I work for Jojo Mart. Bliss. People would hate me. <gasps> maybe, but I'd live in a lovely town, and then I'd enter the, you know, the the competitions whenever those happen, and just get trounced by Where the local farmer. And dance with the go to the flower festival. The flower never, never get asked to by anyone to dance at the flower festival. That's okay. Festival, you can just go. So. You don't have to be asked. No, I'd rather just not go. And work down at mine. I'd rather, you know what? I'd actually just rather not rather go to the flower not, dance. Yeah, if no one wants to that's dance, that's a good me, one. To be point? fair, we're only sli- we're only slagging off because you you made us feel made really valid points about your terrible decisions. No, it's not terrible decision. Completely invalid points. Yeah. Yeah. I want to live in Frozen Dragonland. Ooh, yeah, I'm I do. Yeah. It's not Frozen Dragonland. <laughs> I've freed them all. It, easy. Could do it in, in yeah, and there's And, a, and, and there's a McDonald's. Hours. And in Kena, we've defeated the bad boy, so there's no monsties around. And there's like 60 rocks. And there's, and there's a cinema little, that, little that only plays Star Wars films all day. And I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't care if everyone was dead, even if I was dead. Then yeah, I'm immortal. It's matter. heaven. It's literally, it's literally heaven. heaven. <laughs> Just hanging out. Get to wear a mask. Swimming in the pool. It's always sunny in 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 Canadelphia. Uh, great. Good. Uh, it's time for a section we've literally. I never enjoyed actually that question. Before. Did you? I yeah. Enjoyed it too. Okay. Well, it's time Until for for, for a section we've Could, never done before. Uh, uh, weird. We no, knew no. no what special no. thanks. No, I was gonna do it. Up. We were gonna go in, well, and then I was gonna it. say, I know, but I said to Ashton put it below, and she didn't, so no. I was just gonna do it. Well, and then I was gonna do it. It's before. weird news. It's time for weird okay, news. Okay, apparently we're going rogue. It's weird news time, and for the first time ever, weird news is brought to us by our podcast producers. If you go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump, you can sign up at the tier, which I'm not, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's a $25 tier, potentially. Uh, that might be it. In order to yeah, get so. your name in the podcast producer pot. And so, weird news is brought to us by Peter Austin. Is it? <laughs> yeah, congrats. Also, as and well why? As, as well as Peter Austin, Dylan. Hutcher 10. Ellie Nicholas. Fred Cartwright, in parentheses, G.Y. Goliath. Evan Bredenbach. Nick Flowers. Sean Legg. And Jack Bradshaw. Thank you very much, guys. Once again, patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. Thank weird news, producers. Peter. What weird video game news do you have? Oh, it's in my oh pocket. My God, I, did I wasn't prepared. I was thinking oh. so much about producers. Uh, Remember, if you uh, follow us on various social media platforms, uh, twitter.com forward slash team triple jump and facebook.com forward slash team triple jump, you can submit weird news. We do a post once a week, I think on a Tuesday. Uh, and if you pop it in the comments or the replies, we may well choose your weird news. Mm. Mm. Uh, I got a DM from Hollow Eyes about this. Um, so thank you to Hollow Eyes. It wasn't posted anywhere else on the, either the tweet or the Facebook post. So this yep. is a special secret weird <laughs> news. Yep, yep. How dare, <gasps> this is the headline, how dare Neopets taint my childhood with NFTs? <laughs> this sounds like a Plunkit. It's Kotaku.com. It's not Plunkit. <gasps> oh. It's Plunkit's perhaps protege. Zach. No. 
It's CC Yang. Oh, that's a new oh. one. It's a new one. But maybe wow. Plunkett is Plunkett sort of spreading hates. his hate. They, the they sound nice. He hates yeah. the nuff. CC Yang. Yeah. Uh, CC. Nice. CC is um, out nice all thing. one word. It's not the, the letters CC. It's not like AA Milne. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't no, think I it was. It was C E C E. C C. S I S I. Oh. Sci Sci. Sci Sci. Maybe Sci Sci. Sorry, Peter. Would you like to read your article? I would. The Neopets developers recently revealed on their website that they are creating NFTs for over 20,000 customized pets, all in partnership with several blockchain companies. So far, the public response from the past and present community members has been overwhelmingly negative. Neopets is a pet adoptable website where users can play minigames, collect virtual items, and join friend communities. At the height of its popularity, Neopets had over 25 million users, with 80% of them being minors. An entire generation oh, it's of... It's good that they've got hobbies down there. I thought you were going to say being men. Very good. Uh, being men. 85% of them being boys. Being grown men. Uh, an entire generation of web-savvy netizens, a word you don't get to use very often, <laughs> spent a significant part of their childhood on Neopets, which is why they're not happy to see its developers hand over their beloved IP to cryptocurrency investors. Boo. Boo. Non-fungible tokens. I always want to say non-fungible tokens. Yeah, it sounds, yeah. feels right, doesn't it? Uh, commonly known as NFTs, meanwhile, are cryptocurrency tokens that represent a piece of digital art. I'm going to skip this bit because everyone knows what a cryptocurrency, uh, what a uh, NFT or is. Or they NFT. don't, and they will A, never understand, or B, never want to understand. I mean, I, understand. I know what one is, but I don't understand what it is. Yeah, no, I don't understand why you would buy it. A no Kotaku paragraph is going to help me understand it. Um, according to The Verge, a single GIF of a cat had the carbon footprint of an EU resident's electricity usage for two months. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't understand that really either. It's but... something to do with, like, the blockchain. It... That is where the miners come in, actually. Oh, yeah, it is. All those sort of... miners, I see. Uh, the, the whole point of an NFT is and blockchain is something to do with the fact that various computers and systems around the world are able to verify each other so no one can like right. copy and paste or like fake the fact that they own something because it's verified by other systems and in order for all those systems to run it takes a lot of energy um i think something to it's roughly that right it's because um, it's all fake and it lives in a computer world yeah they need to do computer things to make it happen uh so why do it? Cryptocurrency enthusiasts are attracted by top prices for NFT artwork, which have sold for sums as large as, a very nice, $69 million. Whoa! Not every NFT can command such prices, though, and the Neopets NFTs have not yet been released. There's no guarantee that Neopets NFTs will be a worthwhile investment. What matters is that the Neopets owners believe that they could net immense profits, even if it comes at the expense of the environment. Ah, who needs that? Yeah, I know. We'll all just go and live in Neopet world. That'll be great. Aren't Neopets owned by Scientologists? Is that still the case? Uh, they're owned by Knowledge Adventure, or they were made by Knowledge Adventure, which was uh, made a lot of edut edutainment games. Yeah. But yeah, there is some sort of Scientology... There was a great link. People Make Games video all Maybe about it. People in charge of Knowledge Adventure are Scientologists, I don't know. The original owners or creators ended up leaving because the Scientologists bought it right. and they, they started being weird. Weird. Yeah. Uh, Neopets part the companies are now producing NFTs that are images of adoptable pets, except they are, quote, digital memorabilia which likely means you can't actually use them as on-site pets. Each one comes with a randomly generated background, personality, assets, and clothes. So buyers will own their very own image of a decorated Neopet, which is something that... Do you want to share anything with the class there, Miss Matthews? <laughs> I was just saying that um, the CEO of Neopets was a Scientologist. Oh, okay, there you go. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Austin, I apologize. That's all right. Uh, it's something they could already be uh, already do by creating a free account on the website. One example is a robot, a Akara, wearing a straw hat and black cape, standing against a pale blue background. Another is a flaming drake in a brass hat and blue overalls. None of them are as elaborately decorated as the pets that many players have on the actual Neopets website. Good. The article continues, but that's that's the bulk of it. Neopets has been NFT'd. Oh. Uh, hmm. <sighs> I'm sorry. Bad news. The Thank robots you, are taking over. They are. 
Yeah. I have some weird news also. Yes. And I picked this one because not only was it DM'd to me twice, but it was submitted three other times okay. on Facebook and Twitter. So Samuel Benson at SB Music, Pantsman at Pantsman Music, and Toby at Ketchup Duncan sent this to me on Twitter Music. slash commented on the tweet. And and David Le- Lever? Yes. 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 And Tom Monk submitted on Facebook. Monk. This is Bethesda gives Deathloop actor PS5 so he can play his own game. On Kotaku... By Zaki Zweizen. Zaki Zaki. Zaki Zaki. This was um, trending, I think, on Twitter. I think this it story. was, yeah. PS5 consoles are still hard to find, so voice actor Jason Keeley was unable to play without some help from Bethesda. <laughs> actor Jason Keeley, who voices Colt in the recently released Deathloop, is among the many still unable to get their hands on a PlayStation 5. After admitting his problem, Bethesda helped him out and got him one, IGM reported. Mm. And that's basically the whole story, but there is also... <laughs> Excellent. Else. Thanks, Ashton. Thank you. Um, when Deathloop came out earlier this month, Keeley recorded a short video promo for the game. In that clip, he explained that he needs he still needs a PS5 so he can actually play the game. He voices the main character of and asks for anyone who can help him get his hands on one. And there's a video here. Would you like to hear the video? Or do you not care? <laughs> Are those the only two options? <laughs> what a loaded question. questions. I care. I don't know if it's like <laughs> podcast friendly. I, I, it is. I listened to it earlier. It's just him saying. Coopers, Jason on the voice behind Colt. I cannot wait for you guys to get your hands on this video game and play it this week. September 14th, Death Loop drops. Go out and get yourself a copy. If anybody copy. can give me a copy and a PlayStation 5, I would appreciate it. Enjoy the game, y'all. <laughs> Please, though. For the love Oops. of God. Hey, hey, hey. hey Sculpt, be quiet. What up, Death um, Loopers? <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> Hello, PlayStation Nation. Remember, Death Loop is a PS5 console exclusive, at least for a year or so. Um. And while Arcane's latest game release on... While Arcane's latest game released on PC2, not everyone has a rig powerful enough to play it. PC2? They did it, guys. That's been announced yet. <laughs> wow. They actually did it, guys. <laughs> the PC, is that a, joke? a PC2? Like? Yeah, the sequel to the right. PS5. They've done it. Ladies and gentlemen, PC2. We've done, done it. it. Um, in response to the Senior Vice Pre- President of Global Marketing and Communications, Pete Hines, suggested that he and the publisher could, and I quote, Probably help Keeley on his quest to obtain a PS5. Mm. Jeff Keeley. Jeff. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> well, Ashton's phone has decided that that's the end of the article. He got a PS5. That's... that's it. Oh, no. Brilliant. Can I'm... Bethesda please send Ashton a new phone oh, now? Oh, 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 we're on Twitter oh, now. Oh, it's all going well. God. Uh, I've got some weird news. Okay. Tell us the weird news. It was sent to us by Dan Lockie at DanLockie25 on Twitter. And it is a Kotaku article because, of course, it is. Mm. Amazon's New World MMO won't let you name yourself Jeff Bezos. Oh, what? <laughs> Wasn't someone called Amazon Amazon Helpline or something? <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, no, you cannot name yourself Jeff Bezos or any variant thereof. And Amazon's recently released an incredibly messy, massively multiplayer online colonization you, simulator, oh, The Bezos. New World. Yeah. Maybe he's already got it. Maybe he's and already got it. That's why you can't. Sorry, this username is already taken. <laughs> this is unsurprising given the extremely fragile egos of the most powerful men on earth. Whoa, oh, taking Jesus. swipes. This is from uh, Ren- Renata Price, by the way. Mm. Go off, Renata. Even in beta, the new world suffered its fair share of name shenanigans, most notably when a player changed her in game name to Amazon Official, only to then spread true but unflattering facts about the company <laughs> to its player base. So it makes sense that Amazon would beef up the game's naming restrictions before. For the full release. Didn't we cover this in a we, previous yeah, year? I, I we I definitely did Amazon official. Yeah. Yeah. The rules as written are that you cannot impersonate any individual or entity, including employees or representatives of Amazon, which is weirdly defensive, isn't right. it? Right. Mm. Because uh, I bet you can do that in, you know, you could call yourself Mr. Activision. Mr. Mr. Activision. Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, for those of you hoping to skate by with variants like Jeg Beesbors or Jeb Phazos. <laughs> You can have those two for free. We checked. (laughs) I have bad news for you. You also cannot use misspellings, alternate spellings, or combinations of words, symbols, and letters to produce a result that would otherwise violate this policy. So they had to pay someone to sit down and come up with every possible combination. Yeah, Jack Beesbors. That (laughs) that seems fine. Even if you secure the coveted Beesbors name, if Amazon notices, you may be forced to change it after the fact. Could you be Jeff Bees Nuts? Oh, see, that's That's great. That's a good one. 
Uh, blocking names and their associated variants can be an incredibly difficult and time-consuming process. Mm. One Twitch streamer at Tom Simonson on Twitter posted a video exemplifying how difficult this can be, specifically around the still ongoing Twitch hate raids. Yeah. This makes the fact that the New World team took the time to implement a ban for an easy joke feels even more ridiculous. Mm. Um, oh yes, so of course Amazon and Twitch, don't they? For those of you still working, still searching, sorry, for a real workaround, I wish you all the luck in the world. If you actually manage to do it, you'll be the only person playing the game as Jeff on account of the game's unique uh, unique name rules, which apply to every server. So you can't be called Jeff. Sorry, Jeffs. No Jeffs allowed. No Jeffs allowed. Uber rich men known for facilitating hellish working conditions and company policies are famously sensitive individuals. Mm -hmm. to, to be made fun of is, for egotistical weirdos, the highest form of oppression they can envision. And they will do some wildly cringy flip to try and get you to stop. It never works because they just make it so easy. That's the thing. Like, Does it matter? If you are Jeff flipping Bezos, why does he care? I get that, like they're saying, we don't want someone called Amazon official going around <laughs> saying, oh, hey, we're Amazon. And uh, did you know that people have to piss in bottles while delivering your products? Um, but I don't know, specifically pretending you're... No one's going to believe it's him, is it? Are no. They? So it doesn't matter. It's Jeb Geeb Geebscorbs. Oh my God, it's it's Jeb not like a fraudulent it's thing. It's Geebscorbs. Look at him. Yeah, well, there we are. Fetch. That was... Yeah. Fed bees boss. <laughs> Fed bees boss. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. I stopped because you started. Talking. No, no, no. I wanted to hear the end of it. <laughs> James so this has got to be. <laughs> this has got to be excellent. Mm. I'm sure, this can't be. <laughs> Sorry. This will always be amazing. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Yes. Uh, this is from Ketzel. It says Angel, but there's an accent on yeah, the A. An so is it Angel? Uh, Angel. An Angel. Uh, I'm not sure, but thank you, Ketzel, for the question. Hi, Beshta. What games from, Best say, the last 10 years do you think could have worked in old generations? For example, I think The Last of Us could have been a really entertaining PS1 game mm. in a similar style to Resident Evil or Silent Hill. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Kat, so much. Thank you. Uh, Peter, what games are you demaking? Uh, I mean, I think that within the question is probably one of the best kind of examples. Mm. I think something like The Last of Us would have worked very well in a Resi slash Silent Hill style. You know, if Capcom had made The Last of Us on PS1, it would have been great. Um, I thought maybe something like uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 might be more appealing to you and I, Ben, and perhaps Ashton. I don't know what your thoughts are on it, actually. Um, if it was a more linear game, mm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you go back to the, the first Red Dead game, which wasn't Red Dead Redemption 1, it was Red Dead Revolver, um, which in some ways is a bit silly. It's a bit... It's less um, of a historical simulation of the Wild West and more of a spaghetti Western, I think. Um, but if you took the, you know, very good kind of research and world building and character uh, writing uh, that Rockstar did for RDR2, but just put it into a more compact, linear experience, maybe on PC in like the early noughties or something like that, you know, a pretty historically accurate uh, Wild West game could be pretty good, I think, because mm -hmm. um, it's just a bit too open for me, uh, for my taste. I think Little Nightmares would be a really good, possibly a side scroller, or if not, like a kind of spooky mascot platformer thing. So it's like a you know a three D platform game jumping around on on the PS One, but in that kind of haunting world. I think that could work pretty well. Because um, that game relies mostly just on its visual design, not on its graphical fidelity, but on the actual design of the world itself, which you, you could very easily replicate mm -hmm. on something like the PS1. And then, oh, here's a hot take for you. Imagine Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3 as an MMO. Whoa. What? Like an early PC MMO, but not Fallout 76. <sighs> you know, maybe just like a, a more interesting... One that RuneScape. has like hugely populated servers. Yeah, maybe a bit like RuneScape because I guess that would straddle uh, between the early Fallout games where it's yeah, more it top down. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, you could do a, an MMO Fallout 1 or Fallout 2 RuneScape uh, kind of game. Um, I think that could be pretty interesting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, those are my ideas, Ashton. Well, I also went down with the Last of Us. With the sickness. With the sickness. <laughs> the trumpets. Uh-huh. Um, wow. 
Yeah. A Rizzo kickstarter. What do you think about that? Mm. Wow. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Um, and I thought the 2018 God of War could be pretty good. Um, it was quite linear. Um, similar to The Last of Us on the PS1 situation. Um, but Stardew Valley is already basically you could put it on a DS now and it'd be fantastic. Yeah, true. So I think if you whacked Stardew Valley on the the old school DSs with the touchpad, that'd be brilliant, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think Hades would be quite good. Mate. Bring it back, mate. Take it back to like... Mate. <laughs> PlayStation 1 or maybe PlayStation 2, perhaps. I never had a PlayStation 1, so oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Peter's got five. You can yeah, borrow one if you want. Yeah. Um, and I think that'd be quite fun to play sort of a bit more pixelated because it's already got it's quite stylized, but it'd be quite fun to kind of like, you know, make it a bit more old school situation. Mm. I don't know. I've never played a PS1, <laughs> but that's what I think would be good. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having really a crisis lost, of confidence really as confidence this question is because coming. you guys just didn't say anything. No, I, so I, I was just, was just like, listening attentively. I was like, oh, this is bad. No, oh, no, oh bad. no. Yeah. Read the it's, room, Ashton. Oh, it's God, going it's wrong. Good, you know what? I'm just going to go it's home. Gone wrong. On the subject of the PS1, I have just thought what something else that would work well is uh, this might even be your answer, Ben. Actually, but have you seen that demade Bloodborne? Yes. Yeah. Is that your answer? It's yeah, one of my answers. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, no point in my paper. It would work like Nightmare Creatures on the PS1, which was a similar kind of dirty, like, gory. Well, yeah, it was pretty gory mm -hmm. for the time, and, like, everything was just made of mud and yeah. soot. Um, soot. Soot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, Ashton, no, your ideas were great, and remember that everybody's retro is different. Mm. Yeah. So it being on the D the old, the big fat DS makes a big lot of sense. Yes. Um, and I agree a lot, actually, because I also thought Stardew Valley would just translate perfectly, even back to the PS1. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can get a, a rudimentary version of SimCity working on the NES or the Shit. SNES, SNES uh, then why on earth couldn't you get a version of Stardew Valley working on the PS1? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why, the, why the flip knob? Uh, in addition, a lot of other indie games could also make that jump quite easily. Undertale would have Undertale. easily yeah. easily translated to that to that time if the Limbo. tools were more. Yeah, mm -hmm. Limbo even. Uh, certainly, pixel art games would would work very well. I think uh, yes, the Bloodborne remake. We've spoken about it on this podcast before. You should go look it up. It's uh, I think it's a one person project, mm. uh, but it's really impressive hmm. uh, what they've managed to do. That looks like it, it just looks like a PS one game. It's so it's so cool. Yeah, it? I'm a big fan of it. Um, Uncharted could just be a platformer. I thought about saying that, yeah, like Tomb Raider. Yeah. yeah, especially in the sections where you are just, you know, the camera zooms out and you're just climbing stuff or jumping from pillar to pillar or whatever. You know, that that could work perfectly well on a PS1 if translated properly. Mm -hmm. Equally, if it was, again, it would need some some a lot of sort of adapting. But Mass Effect... I think, even though it's not from the past 10 years, but it can't, so, I mean... It came out last year yeah. again. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It came out last... This year? This year. This year. Oh <sighs> Don't God. scare me. 2021's not gone yet, is it? <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, that came out this year, so it is within the last 10 years. I think Mass Effect could work, especially if you turned it into a turn-based... Um, uh, yeah, turn-based RPG in terms of the combat. Right, yeah. So it's not, you know, in real time, you're like running OG through a battlefield and shooting. Season. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So you just take it in turns to use your powers and your moves and stuff and you know you still got all the lore and the conversations could could be probably wouldn't be voiced added i wouldn't have thought but you could still choose different options yeah. and it would come on 15 discs 15 cds <laughs> mm -hmm. um uh -huh. but i think that would work there's a lot of games that i think could translate pretty well or at least the bulk of the experience that being the narrative could certainly be could come across so you would still get the 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 experience if not the gameplay mm -hmm. Uh, but there we are. Well, a few suggestions. Mm. Well, well, I can I just a couple of ideas, I suppose. That was really good. Ideas. Thank you, Ashton. Yeah. I appreciate it. And so was yours, Peter. Thanks. Yeah, ours were better than yours, Ashton. Yeah, no, they were. were. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> You need to have more confidence in yourself. You do. Sorry. They were it was, excellent answers. It was incredible, like just, just watching you halfway. fall apart in real time. Like, no, it's fine. What are you doing? It's fine. I think it'd be really, really good. good. Well, mm, actually, I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to be quiet now. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. I'm hiding my shirt. By the way, it's time for the big discussion.
It's big discussion time. Time for the big discussion this week. It comes courtesy of Rob Clark, who says, Hi gang, finally got a new job so can jump back in on as a Patreon supporter. Oh, Thank you, Rob. Congrats, congrats on, on the job. job. Thank you. He got a job and he thought, finally, I can support Triple Jump on Patreon. This is the only reason I got a job. That's what you should all be thinking yeah. at all times. Exactly. Yeah. We should, if we're not your number one priority, then what are you what doing? Are you doing? Quite Us right. first, Kids. then food. Then family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> food above family. Mm. In light of the simply hilarious casting of Chris Pratt in the role of Mario, Truly he's unhinged. so cool. He's, he's, so, he's cool. so cool. <laughs> he's so cool. Who are some of ho- who are some Hollywood actors you'd like to see uh, poorly cast <laughs> in video game film adaptations not suited for them? Personally, I want to see Danny DeVito in the role of Kratos battering enemies with a giant rum ham. Love and kisses, Rob. Thank so you, if Rob. you... I'm sure you've seen this now, uh, the casting of the Super Mario movie. So cool. uh, this was on the Nintendo Direct the other yeah. week. Yeah. The, the voiceover remark when Chris Pratt was announced as Chris the voice Pratt of Mario. So cool. He's, He's so, so cool. cool. Uh, Dunkey, if you're familiar with him on YouTube, uh, D-U-N-K-Y. Mm-hmm. It might be an E in there. I don't think it is. Uh, if you look up his live reaction to it, it's just him get, getting more and more sort of laughing more and more uh, hysterically uh, every time someone every, else every time and he just goes what the F and then just his voice just gets higher and higher and he laughs yeah. more it's, and you can just hear his partner in the background just equally like it's just such a it's genuine great. reaction of like what it seems like what a joke, Charlie Day not. as Luigi it's Seth so Rogen cool. as Donkey Kong or whatever and, and, he's uh, so cool Jack Black as Bowser yeah it yes. doesn't make so any Jack sense Jackson it's like Jackson yeah <laughs> yes yeah it's going to be an absolute disaster, and I'm I'm it's here for it. It's coming together beautifully. I'm the really, memes are really excited. Just gonna be off the scale. Truly. He's so cool. He's so cool. I'm <laughs> so so excited to see this film. But I have assembled a small cast for my chosen game. I don't know about you oh, guys. Oh, you did like a full cast for a, one no, for a specific game. game. I mean, there were there were no instructions. No, no I, I, I picked a couple of random people for certain. Characters okay, well, I've got I've got a few characters okay. for one game. What have you got? Peter? Uh, but yeah, if you, for those wondering why it didn't make it to our weird news, it's because here it is in the big discussion. Mm. It was very much the weirdest news of the week. Yeah, but he's yeah. so cool. He's just so, so cool. cool. Uh, I actually thought before I even read this question at the time when they were doing the weird casting of Mario Mm. I thought Danny DeVito would make a good like old old Mario or Mario's dad yeah he would he looks like Mario Mario in a certain way was it Jumpman right because Mario is Jumpman's son I think is that I thought Mario is is Jumpman well I I I thought that I'm going to have to look it up, but I've I've heard varying things. They retroactively oh, yeah. made it know. so that he's. I don't, I'll have They're a look. Just related. But yeah, Mario's dad. I, he's not even a real character from a video game, but Danny DeVito is actually Mario's dad, yeah. in my, or his sort of like. He, he could be Wario, Mario's maybe. He actually, be, he would be a great Wario, he especially would be a good in Wario. comparison to Chris Pratt's Mario. Yeah, <laughs> that would be great. It's just a fan theory. Oh, okay. uh, a fan theory. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I I mean, remember this is poorly cast. Uh, characters. I would love for Willem Dafoe to voice Kirby. <laughs> Just this sort of uh, uh, gravelly kind of yeah. angry man. Uh, and I want him to like have to read depressing monologues and like look out of blinds at the rain <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, with his big <laughs> pink circle hand. And then he can uh, suck things into his giant Willem Dafoe mouth. His giant maw. Maybe these sort of Half and half Kirby's face with Willem's face yeah. in the it has CG his movie. eyes. Yeah, it's got bits of him. <laughs> and his on like there. his like this bit of his face because this bit of his face is quite just this the cheeks. Yeah, yeah, the jowls, the jowls, the jowls. The and then in the post credit scene, it flashes back to two years earlier, and Kirby, regular Kirby inhales actual <laughs> actor <laughs> Willem Dafoe, <laughs> and that's why. He's had like he's forever. had Willem Dafoe's powers, and then the he goes and looks years. into the mirror and says, "I'm something of a Kirby myself." <laughs> uh, in a similar Boo! vein, Boo! I have got. Uh, I would love for um, Detective Pikachu to be voiced by Brian Blessed. <laughs> I want the moment of realization that oh, I can speak. I've not, not actually seen that film, and I'm aware of the premise where mm. a guy realizes he can understand this Pikachu. Yeah. I want the first thing that he hears to come out of Detective Pikachu's mouth to just be like, hello! <laughs> <laughs> just loud. <laughs> quick attack! Lustering <laughs> Brian Pikachu. Blessed. Pikachu! Yeah. Oh. But all he can say is Pikachu. Yeah. He's just Pikachu! Boy. Pika, Pika! 
That would be fantastic. It would be amazing. Be you sound like the X Factor man just then. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, that man. Yeah, that man. The X Factor, um, the X Factor yeah. boy. Uh, those, those true. are my, including that Danny DeVito was Mario's dad <laughs> slash Wario, mm. who I know isn't Mario's dad, but he would be a good Wario. Uh, Didn't Danny DeVito voice Detective Pikachu in the game? Danny DeVito voiced Detective Pikachu in the game. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm going to what? I'm gonna have to look this up now. Pikachu game. It's because the Detective Pikachu film is based on the game. Yeah, but... Um, this seems familiar to me as a fact. Really? But I, don't I mean, know. I don't know much. Or about maybe they wanted Nintendo they wanted games. Danny DeVito to voice him in the film. Okay, that right. may be where I'm getting it conflated. Um, let me. I'm gonna have to. Sorry. It would be. I can imagine Danny DeVito would be a good voice for mm. Detective Pikachu. Actually, like unironically, it would be. You know, this kind of. And then at the end, when the weird twist happens, it's just Danny DeVito instead of Ryan Reynolds. Right. Yeah. Oh no! People are people just just want it. And they, um, they've edited sort of it together. East Coast. Yeah, that would be, it would work. Mm. It would work well. Uh, those are mine off the top of my head. I'll, I might have a little think while we're going, but uh, Ashton. I only wrote one down, but I've thought of two more, well, one more since we've been doing it. So I would like um, Link from The Legends of Zelda to be played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> Is it just Dwayne going, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's all he does. Um, yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah, but like obviously Link's meant to be this like he's quite small in most of the mm. film, of the mm -hmm. games. I can imagine him just like busting in in this full green like, tunic. Tunic. Oh, you want him live action? I want live action. Yeah. Dwayne yeah. in the leggings yeah, with exactly. a little hat on his head. That'd be great. And yeah. a blonde wig. That'd be perfect. Yeah. It would. I'd also like a version of GLaDOS as voiced by Jennifer Coolidge. Gonna need some more. Yeah, I'm not sure who that is. She's okay. Um, I don't know what you would have seen her in. Have you seen um, a Cinderella story? No. <laughs> okay. Well. Um, Does it have cars in it and guns? No. Well, then, no, I haven't probably seen it. probably has a car it. in it somewhere. Does it have a fast car in it, though? Mm, don't know. With, like, racing stripes on it. She is this woman. You probably recognize her when you see her. Uh, it's a very long panning shot. She's reading a book that says the salmon diet. Yeah. Hold on, can you just talk? Can you believe how extraordinarily gifted my girls are? Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, yeah. 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 Um, I would like GLaDOS voiced by Jennifer Coolidge, please. Mm -hmm. Why not just string her up on like a big old rig and oh she can God. just be GLaDOS? String yeah. her up. Yeah. It's a bit weird. Like, it's you know, just, weird, just just you know, like like she's the the shape of the GLaDOS, you know? What, like bondage? Is no, that... not like bondage. <laughs> Why are you miming your wrists tied because together? She's, in my head, she's holding on to the rig at the back and then her feet are at the bottom of it. Right. Why, though? Because that's what GLaDOS looks like. Know, she's like a GLaDOS big dangly a robot. robot. So why couldn't you have a... Why wouldn't you want a live-action Jennifer Coolidge robot? I don't know why you're looking at me like that. Why would you want why one? Would you? Is because it would be funny. Don't, don't look because at us why we wouldn't want because one. It's, <laughs> because it's meant to be bad movie casting, and I can't think of anything better or worse mm. than having a human being playing a robot. Strung up. like Yeah. Okay. Like the one out of Time Splitters 3, who's sure. just got a cardboard box on his head. Precisely. Mm. Something like that. Yeah. Also, I think it'd be fun to have Lara Croft, um, with the British accent, played by Sofia Vergara. <laughs> trying Who's to that again um she's the really uh, latina one from modern family gloria oh right okay yeah and she's got a really really thick accent yes. and i think it'd be fun to watch her try and do a british accent whilst also <laughs> you wanted to try the british accent. <laughs> yeah. whilst also doing like all of her own stunts saying mate all the time mate, yeah mate. that's how british mate. people speak yeah that is again i want that as a live action as well yeah good if but not gladys right. as a robot no, no that would be weird Stop. just a voice weird what movie? What you've, mo so you've cast, you've a, whole cast movie, a whole movie, which is a good cast, idea, actually. Yeah, I've I cast have a movie. About that. This is the Pokemon Yellow movie. Okay. Right. So, Ash Ketchum. I know technically he's not Ash in the game. It's just the, it's, it's you. Just red or yeah. something like that. Jeff Goldblum. Okay. Is Ash We're Ketchum. starting strong. We are starting strong. Life finds a way. Brock. It, um, sorry, quick question before we carry yes, on. Yes, of course. It's not live action, is it? It's just a no, this is live just... action. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, cool. So Jeff Goldblum. Oh, cool, 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 in yeah. sort of shorts and a cat. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Current day Jeff Goldblum. And a gilet. He's playing a 10-year-old? 11-year-old? Yeah. Playing yeah. a 10-year-old. Something like that. Um, and yeah, he just goes around catching Pokemon. Brock. Kevin James. Okay. 
Who's Kevin James? Who's Kevin James? Kevin, what's Kevin James been Paul in? Paul Blart Mall Cop. Mm. Kevin Sorry, James. I don't know. No, I know who you mean. I just couldn't picture his face. Legendary Kevin James. Is that James. enough you Paul, Paul Blart yeah, Mall Cop? Yeah, yeah, okay. Paul, That's Paul Blart Mall Cop. Paul, Paul Blart Mall Cop. Paul, Paul Blart. You know that one. Yeah. Misty. Yeah. Mm, Melissa McCarthy. Okay. Right. Yeah. You see that? that? You yeah. see in this crew walking around? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've got Trio. three. We've got three ten-year-olds. I don't know that Brock is ten. Actually, he might be a bit older. Jeff Goldblum, Kevin James, Melissa McCarthy, all ten, mm-hmm. all ten, all ten Ish. years old, yeah. all ten years old. Ish. Warm it up, mass of ten. Professor Oak, also Kevin James. <laughs> so whenever they're, whenever, <laughs> <laughs> just in like a wig. Whenever they're having a conversation, the camera has to. Brock, Brock is never on on the same screen. As Professor Oak. Yeah, the they rule of 180. Do that, though, yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, but do the... we have the technology for two I don't Kevin know if James? I've seen uh, Liv and Maddie, the Disney Channel show, but they're both played by the same character. Really? And they, sometimes they're on the screen. But in this production, time. the point is that they, they can't, they don't have the time or have the effort right, to do that. So they two have Kevin to James. just too like budget. cut from 90 degrees left and right. And the budget's gone to playing Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah. Exactly. So there's two Kevin Jameses. Um, Gary Oak. Is it Gary? Yeah, Gary. Yeah, the Gary. rival. Mm. Mm. Kevin Hart. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. So he is also playing a 10-year-old, mm. but he's 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 one step ahead of Jeff Goldblum. I like how you had the yeah. chance yeah. to, at least if Professor Oak and Gary Oak had been played by the same person, there mm. wouldn't be like a family thing. It's no, not, it's not what we're doing here. No. no. It's not what we're doing here. And finally, Pikachu. Yeah. Terry Crews. Okay. That's good. I like right? that. Yeah. And again, and again all he can say is Pikachu. Is like... No, this is live she, action Terry Crews. So I want to paint Terry Crews yellow. Put him in a child's Pikachu costume. It's I want just... Terry Crews to burst out like the Incredible Hulk <laughs> yeah. of a of a of a child's Pikachu. Like in the mm-hmm. in the Old Spice ad where he goes yeah, through power. the wall. That's very precarious yeah. on there. Can we put oh that on there? Probably. It's, it's look. That's that's solid as a rock. I just don't want it to be in shot. That's fine. Peter's okay. got his drink okay. on the edge of the you table. Sure, you don't want Brian Blessed playing Pikachu. Uh, sure? No, I want whatever the one that's playing GLaDOS. I want her in, in full BDSM gear, <laughs> yeah. just sort of playing a Weedle, just maybe. Uh, dressed up like a leather puppy or something. <laughs> with a... Yeah. Yeah, with yeah. ropes. That's what so I want. ropes. That's what I want. Um, but there we are. That's my casting for the Pokemon Yellow movie. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, you can go and see the Pokemon Red and the Pokemon Blue movie, which will be releasing separately. And you have to see all of them to get the full story because you only get a little bit in right. each of them. And, and it confuses them. grandmas everywhere. Yeah. Grandmas don't understand. Mm-hmm. Um, knitted by grandmas. Yeah. But there we are. That's my casting. Fantastic. I do yes. want to see Terry Crews' Pikachu though. Yeah, that would be great. And a Kevin James double feature. He has to be on the poster twice as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kevin Featuring Kevin James. Is it like Kevin in Big James. Mama's house? Like, is he dressed, kind of doesn't look... No, like no, no, Kevin it's just, James. it's Kevin James. They've just not put, made him up. just put like a lab coat on. Yeah, he's wearing... So when he plays... Uh, Brock. Yeah. He just wear like he has like he has the a frying pan. He has the drying pan. Yeah. I use my frying pan as, as a, drying a drying pan. pan. He's got his bomber jacket on mm. and his I feel like he wears an orange shirt and mm. grey trousers and maybe yeah. what was his sort of go to Pokemon? Was it an Onyx? Or? Onyx, uh Vulpix. Yeah. Uh, and he wants to breed Pokemon and also he loves every woman he meets. Mm. That's yeah. his whole deal. Same. And then keep it in your pants, Matthews. <laughs> and then he also plays Professor Oak, and it's literally he's still dressed as Brock, but he just has a lab coat over, over the, top the top of his holding the frying pan behind yeah. his back. Yeah, and you often see him sprint into In frame <laughs> between. Yeah, they don't between cut. different <laughs> shots. He's got to run. It's he's slightly out of breath. Take like his a, jacket off. Yeah, yeah. it's filmed yeah. like a play, so there's no. Mm. It never yeah. stops. You know exactly. Yeah. Make it. Flip and make it. He's Does he get so paid cool. double or not? No. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Okay. Kevin James is lucky to be paid at all, <laughs> really, at this point. Uh, anyway, there we are. That's my casting. Peter yeah. is going to tell you all about where you can find us in various places. I am. Hello. Place. We're Team Triple Jump, if you've not noticed up, up to this point. Uh, you can get our content at youtube.com and twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump. It's where our streams happen on both of those channels. And also uh, videos go out on YouTube, of course. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you cannot change your name to Jeff Bezos <laughs> in the new MMO. Or Jeg Bef Blues. Or Jeg Bef Bloss. <laughs> Uh, but you can get a, a Twitch sub at no extra cost. It's all part of the bundle. Um, so you can spend that on us. We benefit from it financially as though it's a real sub, but you don't have to pay anything extra. So Not consider doing that. Uh, when we're streaming on both YouTube and Twitch, we're modded by Lord Rotovich, Trialing Badger, and Mr. Black. Thank you, mods. 
We've got a Twitter, which is twitter.com forward slash team triple jump and a Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash team triple jump. Twitter is more for our video and live stream announcements and a few hilarious posts here and there. <laughs> uh, Facebook has legacy video content going on there, little discussions and things and occasional Facebook lives is as well. Mm. Um, Fraser looks after Twitter and Facebook for us. Thank you very much, Fraser. Yes. Um, and we have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. Please go and look at the new rewards. Um, all we've really done is add extra benefits mm -hmm. to pre-existing tiers. So, you know, if you're already on there, you're going to start getting new stuff on the tier that you're at. But maybe you might want to upgrade yourself and go and look at like some of the new exciting things that are available. Yeah. The value for money is just skyrocketed. <laughs> Absolutely. We have a website. It's triple j.mup that's triple j u dot m p in case you were confused mm -hmm. um if you want to get to our discord you can go triple j.mup forward slash discord we are modded by joe jack and hollow eyes um if you want to check out our podcast in all of its forms maybe while you're cooking you want to listen to it but you can't watch it because you've got to focus on your stew no worries Ew. head on head over to triple j.mup forward slash podcast to find out where else you can listen to don't it don't come home tonight son mum has got the <laughs> stew, <laughs> the stew. um <laughs> The slow cookers on. Oh no! Oh. Um, all of our live streams are delicious. In though. case you, no, they, not, I mean, no. they're all right. I prefer a casserole. Mm. God, no, I prefer a stew. Okay. Um, all of our live stream VODs, in case you miss one of the many live streams we do a week, can be a triple jerk dot map forward slash VODs. And also we have a shop where you can buy nice merchies like these pair have got on right now. Merchies. 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 Uh, triplejumpshop.com. And if you want to check out all the new stuff that's coming out, you can follow us at Triple Jump Shop on Twitter. And that is all I have to say on the Thanks. Thank you, Ashton. Uh, why not uh, follow Peter and Ashton on Twitter and Instagram at that Peter Austin and at Scrambled Ashton and myself just on Twitter at Confused underscore Dude. Mm -hmm. We do lists every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Streams every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, oh. being the solo joint stream, sorry, <laughs> on Basically. YouTube and uh, Monday to Friday, the other days, basically, being solo streams on Twitch. Worst Games Ever is fortnightly, Friday for patrons of a certain tier, Sunday for everyone else. We do the podcast every Saturday and we do shows once every other week or thereabouts. Why not leave a review on iTunes or your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's oh, rhythms. Uh, Triplejump.gg for all your digital currencies and subscriptions and stuff. It helps us out. Thank you to those of you who have done that. The After Dark Podcast. That's a podcast where we can say swear words and we still answer questions from you but it's exclusive to patrons at a certain tier too hot for youtube yeah why aren't you why are you gatekeeping content we're not it's genuinely it's just that we sexy. just we we just can't put it we on wanted to do it YouTube. and we can't put it on youtube because our channel will face repercussions not because mm -hmm. we're saying awful cancelable things it's just that youtube doesn't like swear words and we get demonetized so it has to go on vimeo and the podcast feed and so the yeah. only way for us to monetize it would be to to put it as a reward Absolutely. rather than have and youtube it's still ads. gonna be great yeah so. yes mm patreon.com forward slash team triple jump to go check that out and yes there is new merch triplejumpshop.com go buy it go get yourself a wild card t-shirt go get yourself do we still have uh, memory sticks in I stock? don't know if they're sold out yet they're very limited they were quantity, limited so um, if they are available go get them go get the uh, the sports time some jazzy pins shirt mm -hmm. you've got your jazzy pins go yeah, check yeah. them out go check them out we'll hopefully have a new drop in time for crimbles as yes. well mm. with some slightly warmer wear uh, finally, it is the worst games ever week. So go give that a watch. If you're a patron of a certain tier, you've already got access to it. And if you are on YouTube, you will get it tomorrow on oh, Sunday, the yes. time of release. Also, you may have noticed that the podcasts are now releasing at 11 a.m. on a Saturday yes. instead of literally for the purpose of a joke, 420 yeah. is when they've been releasing since the very start. Don't know if any <laughs> of you ever noticed that, that was the specific time they released, but yes. What time should we release them on a Saturday, Peter? No. I don't know. Why don't we do 420? That would be funny. You can't do 690. But now no. we have so much content <laughs> on on the on the plate. That'd be half past eight. <laughs> yeah. That it's always an awkward time to release the podcast because sometimes we have two videos that need to go out on a Saturday and we want to give them both breathing room. So the podcast now releases at 11 a.m. on a Saturday. So you get it even sooner. Ashton, sponsor me. It's Lem Sip Gate. Every 25 seconds, take a sip to help with that cold that's going around the office. Brilliant. Thanks so much for listening slash watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>